how long should it continue? That, to my mind, is a really good question, and, and the jury is still out to a certain extent, although uh, ISOC certainly is a strong supporter of the IGF and will continue to be as long as it continues to, uh, to evolve in a, a positive manner. I think one of, the, one of the other really important things that's happening here is the uh, development of local, national, and regional IGFs, and Bob already pointed to a few. I had the honor of being at the East Africa IGF uh, myself and got to see that, in fact, that, uh, that really did turn out to be a multi-stakeholder forum at the uh, national and, re and regional levels. Uh, there were very high officials from government there. There were certainly business. There was certainly a lot of civil society. And uh, the, the discussions were really very fruitful. Um, there was a good focus on development, certainly, but there was also an appropriate focus on governance mechanisms and policies and what needs to be changed in those two realms. So to my mind, it looked more like uh, the IGF that was described in the Tunis agenda possibly than, than the annual global one. And I think that's, uh, that's something that needs to be fostered and uh, continued. As for the main IGF, and uh, in fact uh, this will become more critical I think as, as we see national and uh, regional IGFs developing, uh, the issue is funding. Um, the Secretariat has done a tremendous job at uh, keeping the IGF going. Uh, they've been helped or hindered to various degrees by those of us on the, uh, the MAG. But the, the shortage of funds really is uh, a problem uh, going forward because as this, as this movement develops to talk about this at the, at the local and national reg uh, regional levels, uh, it is going to require some resources and we need to find a, a way to do that. But I wouldn't say that funding should come in the form of an annual budget allocation from the United Nations or, or some similar body. I really think that the non-traditional funding model we have now where uh, there is a remarkable mix of sources of funding is important because it provides the IGF with a feedback loop about its success as long as the funding continues to grow, and it is growing, it means that stakeholders in the forum are seeing it as a success. What we need to do is broaden the, uh, the, the range of stakeholders who are funding the IGF at whatever level uh, to avoid capture by any one stakeholder group and uh, to, continue to make that a more vital uh, feedback loop. I also think that at by the end of the third IGF, and we're very close to the end now, we probably have had enough uh, introductory sessions on various things. Uh, there, there will always be new attendees at every IGF, and there will be a need to do some basic capacity building, introduction to issues, and so on. But we need to think about uh, having also some more advanced sessions where, uh, where people get together and talk about things in a much more, uh, a, a, a much deeper level that's more likely to produce uh, useful information that to, uh, to inform and influence the policy process back at the national level. One of the things I'd like to suggest that's maybe a little radical is to avoid more, more of these soapbox sessions where we sit up here blinded by the lights, can't see you at all, and uh, you're sitting down there listening to us talk, essentially, and while we hope to get into some discussion, this just isn't realistic. Uh, if we're going to have real outputs in, in the forum that uh, Jeremy was talking about, for example, that really requires much more useful dialogue. There are logistical issues with sound and video recording and so on, which is important for the remote participants and also for uh, producing books, uh, such as the IGF uh, provided us with yesterday, which are, is a very rich source. But we need to find a way of being more interactive, have more space for discussion, and, uh, and much less, uh, mu a much smaller number of speeches. And with that, I'll stop speeching.